squad for maybe Elijah Riley or um, Jacoby Stevens, our rookie out of LSU for help. But thank goodness Roddy McLeod got activated. I'm super excited. Like I said, we've been waiting for this moment for Roddy McLeod to be black, back clear. And I'm super glad that they've been taking their time with Roddy McLeod. So now that he's back, he's going to be back, back. Like we ain't rushing back. So we know that we needed this great news. Especially going against the Kansas City Chiefs. We can use all the defensive help that we can get, baby. And Rodney McLeod is going to be a big help. Especially since our guy Anthony Harris. Six-year NFL veteran. He played with Jonathan Gannon with the Vikings. Jonathan Gannon supposedly had, was a guru with um, Anthony Harris. But Anthony Harris really hasn't been wowing. He really hasn't been wowing. And... Kevon Wallace is playing okay. Marcus Epps, I think, has been playing above himself when he was stepping up and um, to fill that void when Kevon Wallace went down. But Anthony Harris, baby, you were supposed to be the diamond in the rough, and I'm not saying you ain't, but right now it's looking a little bit more rough than it's looking diamond, if you know what I'm saying. So Anthony Harris hasn't been really that great stopping the run. He hasn't really been that great when he's in the box. Helping us against the tight ends. Helping us against the run. And that was kind of supposed to be the thing that he was underrated for. But I'm kind of starting to see why it was underrated. You know what I'm saying? Um, He also had that big penalty. I want to say week week two against San Fran. He had that big penalty late in the game. Like I said, we lead the league in penalties. We got 35 freaking penalties. Uh, We got to break an NFL record in penalties. So everybody pretty much got a penalty. But Derek Barnett... And Anthony Harris stick out to me the most because y'all are veterans. And they committed their penalties when we were still in the game. And those penalties were really turning points that really took us out of the game. So I don't like that. I don't like that. Now, it's just week four. Um, Anthony Harris, Rodney McLeod is the duo that we wanted to see when it came to the safety room. Um, when we signed Anthony Harris as a free agent to that one-year deal. So now we're definitely going to see how he's going to look beside Rodney McLeod. Now, Rodney McLeod has been injured for a while. Injured for a while. So I don't know how much play time Rodney's going to get um, against the Chiefs. But any any help we can get from Rodney, like I said, especially against um, stopping that run, um, getting any help against Travis Kelsey, any help we can get when it comes to getting Rodney back and just being that veteran on the field. It's just another veteran to add. Like I said, Darius Slay and Steven Nelson have been the shining spot 
the bright spot in our secondary. Like I said, um, we're ranked number four right now in the NFL in least amount of 15 plus play passing plays given up. I know it's really chunky. So we're top four and not giving up passing plays 15 or more yards. And that's all credit to Darius Slate and Steven Nelson. We haven't been giving up those big bombs downfield, but we have been letting guys dink and die. Like I said, against the Dallas Cowboys, um, Dak Prescott, on those intermediate throws, Dak Prescott is amazing. And we know that Patrick Mahomes, especially given Tyreek Hill, given Travis Kelsey, is amazing on those intermediate throws. So even if Steven and Darius are being locked down, if we letting them dink and dive down the field, <laughs> it don't mean she. So we definitely need to lock up that middle of our defense and getting Ronnie McLeod back is definitely going to help that. So this is just some great news heading into next, uh, this weekend, this Sunday. Um, like I said, right now it's still looking like, well, it's confirmed that Andre Dillard is going to be playing left tackle. Um, of course, he didn't do the greatest last week, but he hasn't played in a while and started in a while. He hasn't started since November 2019. So let's just hope, you know, he's ready to go against the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, that's super exciting. We also just going to be continuing to monitor our guy, Jalen Hurts. So the last thing I want to address is, first of all, who said they gave up on Jalen Hurts? Not I said the cat. Not I said Simone. Even when I did my freaking rant on Nick Sirianni, I explicitly said in the video, I don't got nothing to say about Jalen Hurts right now. So good or bad, I didn't even address Jalen Hurts because we know, even with Carson Wentz, when you have a coach that's not playing to your quarterback strength, we can't even fully assess what Jalen Hurts is until he has a competent coach. And I'm not saying Nick isn't competent yet, but in those games where Jalen Hurts wasn't wowing us, neither was the play calling. So that's when bad play calling is going to make your uh, any quarterback look um, lesser than what they really are. So we all know we can't fully assess Jalen Hurts. And honestly, Jalen Hurts isn't even our biggest, isn't even our biggest problem right now. What I think the biggest problem is, 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 is Nick Sirianni going to become a, a competent coach? Because there's plenty of coaches that can have Jalen Hurts looking like freaking Tom Brady right now. Yeah, I said it. Better coaching, better quarterback. Unless you're just a trash, trash quarterback, which Jalen isn't. Better coaching is going to make the quarterback look better. Okay, so Nick need to step it up so we can talk, stop talking about Jalen because Jalen is not a problem right now. Our problem is, are we going to get the run game going? Our problem is, are we going to get a big body? A big body, weapon X. We need a big body, y'all. We need a big body. A tight end that can hit somebody with the, ugh. I said a tight end. A receiver that can hit somebody with the, ugh. We need a big body receiver. That would make Jalen Hurts look better too. That would make Jalen Hurts play better. If he's got a big weapon. I love our receivers. But none of them are big body. And that's not taking away anything from our receivers. That's just saying as a whole, we need to add a, a big body X like Travis Fogan was. A bigger target. That would make it harder for corners to cover. And that'll make it for easier for Jalen Hurts to throw open. Because a wise man, a very wise man, told me great quarterbacks can throw their receivers open. And that's facts. And what receivers are usually the ones that get thrown open? The big body fans receivers. Y'all already know. We need a big body out there. I'm not saying we're necessarily going to get him this season. Uh, but next season, this offseason, through the draft, I don't know. Like, we thought Trevin Grimes. You know, Trevin Grimes didn't work out because of the injuries. But what Trevin Grimes would have been? Like, that big body target. Like, Alshon Jeffrey was when he was healthy for us. We need a big body target. You know what I'm saying? Jalen Hurts.
first is one without a run game and two without a big body target. Give him those two things and I'll bet ya, I'll bet ya, he will instantly look a billion times better. And no, before y'all start whining, I'm not saying he doesn't look good right now, but I'm saying if he had a, a coach that was close to his strengths getting the run game going, and a coach that's going to put that R back in the RPO and get him a big body receiver, we need that. And we said that um, a lot of you guys, and I said it before the season started, um, especially when uh, we put Travis Fogum on the practice squad, we all said we need that big body ride receiver. And that would definitely help Jalen Hurts. Any quarterback needs that. Any quarterback needs that. We already know. A run game and a big body weapon. Um, but, yeah, like I said, too, a wise man once told me, because, you know, they were pulling up somebody. I've seen some people floating around the comments saying um, Devonta Smith was open 20 times. Um, I believe that's what they said. Devonta Smith was open 20 times. Um, and Jalen wasn't going to him. I think that's what had some um, Eagles fans frustrated. And the thing that I think has Eagles fans frustrated is because, you know, Jalen Hurts was talking all that big she, but you gotta be a big doctor. You know what I'm saying? It's all in that confidence. You gotta have that confidence. But when you say things like rents do, you know, and you don't make them deposits on the field, then some fans are going to start saying, you know, that's just natural. You know what I'm saying? Like the Migos said, walk it like a donkey. Walk it like a donkey. Um, but, yeah. So, nobody gave up on Jalen Hurts. Stop saying that. Stop it. Stop saying that. Because I haven't heard anybody. Now, I, heard, I have heard some people complain about him. But I haven't heard anybody say, y'all putting words in people's mouths. I have not heard anybody say, I give up on Jalen Hurts. Okay? So, stop putting words in Make sure y'all like this video. Make sure y'all piped up, turked up, ready for the Chiefs because we need that big Philly energy at the link on Sunday. Take down the Chiefs. Like I said, big red. You can get your hundreds to win, but don't let it be this week. Don't let it be this week. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you subscribe. And keep rocking me. Until I take you next time.